Ladies and gents, I got big mug with no water in it. I'm about to have water in that soon. But I didn't have to ring that bell for you. We're going to ring that bell in 30 minutes when the day is actually over. But first things first, apology from the heart, right? From here, I'm going to address a lot of what your concerns are, which is how is it that we can conscientiously go out and say, you know, help us defeat the YouTube algorithm. If so, then we're going to buy those shares. No, that is Andrew of the past, right? Subscribers, likes, it's not worth having a fuss over the most important mission that we have in front of us, which is attacking those hedgies, staying cohesive as a nation of apes, one, ape, one silverback under ape. <laughs> so from now on, uh, that 90k, so that 90,000 subscriber out of the way, right? No AMC promises based on subscriber or like counts anymore. So that's right here. I'm gonna apologize directly to you guys, right? I don't know exactly what the right thing to do here is, but I like the stock and I'm gonna continue liking it. And I want to be able to say from the heart, thank you guys for all of the amazing feedback that you guys have been giving. Instead, I am going to hold on to that 90,000 subscriber and say, we're going to do some major giveaways. We're going to be giving away swag, anything you want from the Andrew Mo Money uh, uh, store, andrewmoemoney.com. And we'll be giving away straight up, uh, straight up whatever we can legally give away. We're going to start a list of all that stuff at 90,000 to random subscribers, people who have subscribed to the show. So first of all, please uh, consider the apology. Please consider the fact that I'm learning, I'm growing, I'm becoming a better uh, stonker slowly through you guys. Thank you, Benjamin, John De Silva, uh, Fun Zone, Julio, uh, Julio, I suppose, Goofy Monkey. <laughs> You guys are making me laugh. We are looking at one of the reddest days you have seen on the market so far. And the first thing that I'm going to say here is we're going to have some fun. We're going to learn from the best. Uh, we're going to give the apes out for Trey. And we're going to uh, buy 10 AMC shares each time Meatball barks. Right? Anytime he goes, oof, off, boof. When he boofs, we are going to be buying those 10 AMC shares. Right There, there's absolutely nothing to do. I can't control when he barks. Uh, he barks whenever he wants to. If uh, if Meatball goes uh, ballistic, runs out of his QB, uh, starts <laughs> Cubby, starts going uh, ape, then I'm going to buy a whole GME share. So that is the love spread between uh, the AMC and GME just for today. Let's find out how that works. Okay, let's find out how that feels. Rimmer said, this is why I love my man, Mo Money. Addresses stuff and changes up things. Mad respect, bro. Hey, I got to own up to things that I don't feel right about in the heart. Seriously. Joji Soros says, Andrew, this is one of the few drops left in my bank account. I want to remind you, we truly love you. You're our fam. Uh, we always got your back. Thank you, Joji. Joji and Krimmer, my, uh, the, my, from the earliest, like, biggest supporters out there, I know where you are. Scissors in the chat, if you guys have been here since... Gosh, like half as many subscribers, a tenth as many subscribers. Uh, thank you guys for getting me up here. I need to give it back to you guys. Seriously, no cap. Here is what we're going to do. We're going to follow the price action, not only of Power Hour, the last 30 minutes of which is going to be pretty exciting. And we are going to talk about uh, uh, the after hours action, especially since there was some suspicious action that happened right after I left. Some, some flash rips that we need to be able to analyze. But first things first, I am going to here. Uh, I, I talk to you guys. Hold on. I talk to you guys from the heart. There it is. Just chilling, been here since 50,000. Uh, Jezebel says, that mysterious pretty lady of his should order some Amazon stuff to trigger deliveries and barks at the door. Now that's there. That's good. <laughs> Chris F says, this day is freaking sad. Manipulators always win. The whole market crashed big today and it's not stable yet. Chris, you're absolutely right about certain things. But I absolutely, I cannot, I cannot disagree more about the hedgies always win. The short sellers are so close to losing their shirts, and that's what we're covering here. That's what we have to talk about. John De Silva, his birthday is on the twenty fifth, coming up soon, which is why uh, when we get up to 
a 1600 on this video, right? That's this is the one time I'm going to talk about it. Uh, I'll, I'll say it one more time if we get up to 2,000 people watching here. 1600 likes, and we're going to see Meatball dab, right? I'm not sure if you guys knew that, but he ha has some tricks under his sleeve. We're going to watch him dab. Just normal, non-stock related rewards uh, for you guys interacting with the channel and defeating that vicious, evil YouTube algorithm. All right, here it is. Ted Paniza, welcome to the Moon Platoon. You are now a brand new officer of the Meatball Army, and we are excited to bring you to Valhalla. Let's get going. Justin Kel Bell says, just took a fat D, got scared for a second, thought about calling 911, really puts life in perspective. I hope everything's okay. Let's just put that out of the way. If you, if you have a real emergency that's not this like fire alarm, uh, Black Friday sale coming early on a Wednesday, I think that you should take a look at this and think this is exactly what happened back in COVID March 2020 when uh, people were able to get 100% plus on Amazon stock, right? This is the time for you to really get in on the ground floor while these two stocks are mucho cheapo. Okay, let's see. Chris F coming in. Have a dab off with me, Paul Raphael. You you sneaky you 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 you. <laughs> Definitely gonna see me, Paul Dab. Yeah, I know. Isn't that fun? We'll have. He has actually a whole repertoire of tricks. I'm starting you off with one of the best. Uh, so that's the one that we're gonna watch today. And he has just a couple more tricks. I'm gonna have to like detach my camera somehow and be able to show you guys one more thing. Right? Let's take a look at Ortex. So we have Ortex here. We are looking at six and a half percent interest change, which is uh, which I thought was just more of yesterday, right? Just showing a very similar like a continuation of yesterday's short interest decrease. But no, this is brand new because the SI percent of free float is down to fifteen percent for AMC. So what in the world? is happening. I know I understand that AMC's price action is innately tied with the rest of the market crashing. But if people are returning their shorts with pretty massive swings this time around, why is the price action not moving up? And that's the kind of the mysteries that we're going to talk about. We're also going to talk about uh, some flash rips back during yesterday's uh, after hours. So this is right when I left, right? We had one huge green candle from 1340 all the way up to 1365. And you thought that this was going to contest 1380. It wasn't until a little bit later that we had two simultaneous and one flash uh, rip all the way up to 1373, rejected both times. Uh, the second time, it only took within a minute. So this is still the minute chart for AMC. So that's suspicious AF. Uh, and the A in AF stands for AMC. <laughs> Oh, man. Yo, base, I appreciate that. Uh, it, people, people having fun here. Frankly speaking, uh, are you only doing power hour streams from now on? So th here's, the, here's the truth of the matter, and my mods, uh, some of my mods really do agree. Uh, oh, yeah, so frankly speaking, I'm answering your question now. Perfect. Um, the, what, where we currently stand is that one... Uh, I don't have the same kind of energy. It really is. I don't have the right type of energy for that early morning. Let's get going. Let's go. Blah, 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 blah. I want to be myself. And myself is very much looking at you guys, uh, feeling positive about the energy you're giving me, and then thriving off of that energy. And we just don't have the same viewership uh, because we don't want to be able to f crowd the airspace with a bunch of people uh, trying to get out very similar messages at the same time. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. I'm just saying that for the channel to grow, you have to look at the, when you look at the YouTube white paper on the algorithm itself, the evil YouTube algorithm, uh, they, it actually becomes pretty black and white that if you have consistently worse live stream viewership, it's, YouTube is just going to remember that and uh, it's a vicious cycle. So I have to be on the air when, uh, when others are not. And so for now, I'm happy with after hours. But yeah, here's my promise to you. If there is some juicy price action happening, right? if the squeeze starts to initiate rockets are a go, you've seen me come on without announcing. That's why turning that bell on is so important. Uh, I will be here when that happens. And once again, for those of you who are afraid that my trading decisions is going to affect anyone else, even with the boilerplate down below that says not a financial advisor, I'm not going to be showing you my sell on on air. It's not going to happen. Uh, Viv R with the 801 gives the AMC DD. Heck yeah. 
AMC actually had a pretty okay day despite double digits down. That double digit uh, price action actually happened pretty much in the very beginning of the market day. Uh, every morning, I kind of wake up at clockwork at 6.30. I don't have to set an alarm. And then I just check the markets real quick. And, uh, and so that's the PST time when the markets are open. I already saw in the very beginning, there was a paper handed event bounced us off of 1266 all the way up to our EMA. Now you see that this, there's no coincidences when it comes to these technical trades. Right, that EMA was exactly the lid that AMC dreaded. We didn't want to be able to bounce off of that, but we did. Rejection hard at the EMA there and twice in the same day. So that's rough. One of the most important pieces of the AMC's price action is that it is now acting very rationally when it comes down to the market crash overall. Now you can you can see a sea of red on my left side, not only for the cryptos, but GME was down nearly 10% as well. It seems to have flip-flopped its roles again with AMC uh, and GME. Originally, AMC was the one that was a little bit more stable, right? If there were massive dips on AMC side, there, sorry, on GME side, there would be like a fifth of that and the same thing vice versa with RIPs. So uh, given that we are seeing a much heftier dip in AMCs because of the crazy price action that has ha been happening very recently. Kai Beardo, proud to be in the Moon Platoon, very appreciative of your work and teachings. I'm learning myself. You guys are teaching me. This is the, uh, this is the back and forth that we're talking about here. Mr. Ryder giving the support. Thank you, guys. Oh, man. Jezebel, Chris Rakus, the mods are in. Rockets in the chat for them. They do so much, especially supporting my emotional well-being. So uh, I have to say, well, first of all, happy birthday. Uh, Jezebel, it's your birthday? Yeah. Happy, happy birthday. All of, from all of us to you, happy birthday. Okay, let's see. Cake, 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 cake. cake. Uh, I have to be, I have the bell on, but you never pop up. Can't stop, won't stop, GameStop says. I have to search for you. Well, you're here. And it, like I said, if we're defeating that YouTube algorithm together, I have to start streaming later and later uh, in the day, but before uh, my counterparts, the other hold'em in, stop sharing. So that's the, that's the tricky part. Because if I stream like 15 minutes after they stop streaming, everyone uh, is just going to go home. <laughs> or if people are still hungry for the market after hours, they need to be able to jump on sometime between 1245 and like 115. That's the golden peak right now. So I'm just sharing with you what's going on with my brain and why I'm not streaming uh, all day anymore. It's just, it's, it's like streaming during Super Bowl power time is what uh, one of my mods said, Andrew, Vegas chef Andrew. It just doesn't make sense. It's very difficult to be able to be at this time and co command the amount of data coming through to from us to you guys. So, did I call it? No, I, I call it power hour. This is this is power hour. This is a financial term. <laughs> the, from twelve o'clock to one, or from three o'clock to four Eastern, uh, it's power hour. What's up, kids? Says Reese Beats. What is going on with your political campaign? You know. You could really take a, I don't know, take a look at Meet Kevin's political campaign for governor of California. And I'm not sure if governors and mayors have very similar um, like campaign strategies, but that's very cool. John DeSilva, if you can do one extra mod, TBH, uh, if I'm being honest. Well, John, if you're applying, let the other mods know and they'll take your, uh, your application. I'm, I'm going to leave it all to them because they are their own, they're, they're their own little posse now. Uh, let's see. Paul Ruiz, I will always tune into your channel when you're on before anyone else. Paul, coming in, making me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, how do we know how much JMC and GME are shorted? Well, that's what's the exact thing that we were talking about in terms of Ortex giving us the, like, official, which I mean the non-naked short percent of free float, right? It's starting to get lower and lower day by day and ortex itself must be freaking out because people are going to be pointing fingers at them to say hey you are giving us straight fud fear uncertainty and doubt about this number heading down and if it if it goes down with this velocity it will be down by 10 percent like sooner than you imagine and ortex is probably doing like flipping through uh flipping like the lid to try and get as many naked shares counted as possible. 
So in that case, we actually do have amc.crazyawesomecompany to see the stock, Stonko tracker AMC. And this gives us a better sense of where those FTDs are. So new FTD data. Let me just scroll all right down to FTD. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh man. Okay, we're going back to the price action for now. But look at this. This is some real free data on failure to delivers. 200,000, half a million, 2.3 million, 2 million, 1 million, 1.5 million. There's some sense into this. I was just watching the big short with the fam uh, yesterday, and it reminded me of how Michael Berry had to go through every single, uh, like, not subprime mortgage, like, <laughs> like expiration date by expiration date, uh, Excel sheet by Excel sheet to be able to actually understand where the where the opportunity is, right? So remember, it takes a lot of digging through this data to actually get through. As in a boomer here, the English prof you won over. What's up, Don? More boomers watching this today. Uh, you've got the top power hour after hour show beating out Benzinga. Well, oh, I didn't know Benzinga actually even had a show. Aw, thank you, Don. The Don. Uh, keep your head up, brother. Anthony Caratozolo. Thank you. It's probably not how you pronounce your name, but I'm... Uh, I'm here giving you the butchered naming. Reese Beats coming in here. Been here with you since 50K subs, and I've been sharing a few bananas with you. Hey, what's up, Reese? Thank you so much. Okay, let's take a look. Did, all, did those stocks that finished in the money last week get bought? Now, that's the tricky part, because we know what the option chain, uh, we know how the option chain builds up. In fact, uh, let me show you the option chain from today. I can just move this down a little bit. There we go. Here's the AMC options chain for the day. It's just what was added to the day. And you can see pretty much uh, like a smattering, actually. Usually it's black and, and blue. <laughs> blue on the right side for call options that are out of the money and black for put options that are out of the money. However, today there have been a smattering of in the money calls at $10 people trying to put support back into AMC, $2 below its current price action, and then a lot of at-the-money calls at 12, 12.50, and 13. So the calls have it right now. We have a ramp that is still propelling us, propping us up to $20. That is, that's not a dead cat by any means on the options chain. Now, let's see. Uh -huh. Hold on a second. Ulysses Flores. Meatball is jacked to all six T's. <laughs> That's the new DD. It's TT. Uh, <laughs> Jay Kaner is saying, what are you about Burry's recent play against Tesla? Gosh, um, I, I, I feel like ever since Burry has like gone off of Twitter, deleted his own account, I feel like I haven't been able to catch up with his plays as recently. But Jay, uh, I'm going to read into that right as after hours is over. Hold on. Back to the markets here. Matt Weiler. Let's go, my guy. Thanks for everything. Weiler. One of my favorite supers to read. What's up, Matt? And Mrs. Krabappel. Mrs. K. Is that what K stands for? Thank you so much. I never learned how to read. <laughs> oh, man. John Ray Floyd says, I'm your first subscriber ever. Just don't fact check that. Wink. Okay, let's see. Not a dead dog. Valley Carr is saying, hold on, what? Message is about 10 minutes or so as the stream fills. Yes, I will be repeating my message. Uh, I will be, re like, that's what the title is. Talk to you guys from the heart. I will be repeating that message again. And as a reminder, when we get to 1600 likes, Meatball is going to dab. And that's pretty cool. Here you go. Giving him a, a little tasty taste. I think Reese is still going to run for mayor of Philadelphia. We have a future mayor in this stream. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Joji Source, for those leaving supers, make them more heartfelt. I want to see a real man cry on live stream. L O L O L. Jeez. Holy moly. Uh, oh, frankly speaking, I'll go further than an hour a day. 
we'll, we'll cover more of the after hours slowly but surely. I, I'm clear, it's essentially like me clearing up my entire schedule uh, during the afternoon and then switching that to the morning, which is actually honestly better for me. Let's see. How can the stock price drop so much? Does this delay the squeeze, Syed? I will be honest with you. This is probably one of the most important rubber band uh, pulling back that we've seen in a long time. Right. We'll remember, we, we refer back to the January squeeze and the March squeeze often, but we will remember this as the, uh, basically, the, pr the first time we can properly say this was, the, the, at the very least, the crypto market crash of 2021, uh, with Dogecoin down 16%, still hasn't recovered yet. Ethereum did recover briefly, but now it's down 15%. Bitcoin almost recovered uh, down 3%, but it was down all the way to 30%. That's 25% down during earlier on the day. Done! Oh, Boomer's coming in with the super. Thank you, Don, so much. Uh, the cool tea rant. I'm going to be able to repeat my message again for you later on. A uh, big fan of you from the UK, says Michael Day. Can we take a look at Riot blockchain in the future? Now, Riot actually works really well with cheat code. That's something that I've mentioned in the past. Pull up trading view. Trading view. When you take a look at trading view, you'll be able to uh, the the signal for Riot. And last time we saw a four out of four for Riot, that played out all the way up to a three out of four sell, which is exactly what you want. You want to be able to have trust in these uh, buy and sell signals for it doesn't really matter, right? For a Four out of four, for example, right here, or a three out of four right here. You could jump right in, buy in here, 21, and then be able to jump back up. This was also where that crypto crash started. So Riot is a, is a smoothing of the crypto price action, and you'll be able to get a better sense of you know when these four out of fours happen. You could then proxy that over to Bitcoin. There's a lot of smart things you can do if you had cheat code algorithm uh, under your belt. That's why I use it. It's in the description down below if you want to use it yourself. Nava Alu says, do you think we can be back to last week's volume tomorrow? Tomorrow is, excuse me, tomorrow is looking like a positive day, especially since we only have eight minutes left on the charts. And we are seeing both of our stocks do a one last, one last climb, 12.55 all the way up to 12.57. That level of resistance is not yet blocked by that VWAP, which means we actually have a fantastic chance to be able to cross over, which is happening right now, and then consolidate between the VWAP to try and push through one last time. So this big green candle, this big green cucumber coming up for us is a positive sign. LA King riding with a data scientist. Heck yeah. Remember, uh, we're just smooth-brained apes here. We're all looking for a banana here. So I like to see that this price action peaks up again at 168.43. I can see that there is a logical gap here. Not only is AMC hitting the same resistance that it was struggling underneath today for most of its price action, GME is uh, hitting the, the plateau that it was rejected by at 168.28 earlier. So there's a chance for them to uh, decide that price action deserves to go a little bit higher. But as a reminder, AMC's VWAP is right above. So I am having a hard time believing that in five minutes we are going to be able to cross 1262, but I am hopeful. Let's actually take a look at that Stunko Tracker. The, oh, that's not Stunko Tracker. Here. So this is Stunko Tracker, and you'll be able to see... How many calls expiring right now? Even at 1240, we have nearly quintuple call, uh, quintuple digit calls expiring in the money this week, right? With another 25% more if we hit $13, right? AMC was there almost all day. And here it is. There it is. I, I blink, I miss. B million. Appreciate everything we do. Andrew jumped on as soon as I got my notification. Support your new strategy 100% and love the bark and buy idea. Bark and buy. Hashtag bark and buy. Take a look. 
But as we said, VWAP keeping us on the good behavior, volumetric weighted average price giving us a little small lid, but that's okay. We had already said we're happy with being able to cross over 1257 into after hours right now. Last five minutes, then we ring that bell. Very close. Irrelevant says likey likey. Something about that makes me smile. Okay, GME also pushing past the level of the soft resistance here. I wasn't sure if I was going to put a line here. Looks like 168 gave GME a lot of trouble overall today, even acted as support earlier on. So that's a brand new trend line that we can start adding here. Yes, and now we've crossed over. Now we've crossed over, this is now support gives us a positive outlook to try and retake 170. That's where its VWAP is. It's pretty, it's pretty damning to the criminal investigation that will eventually happen for manipulation of GME AMC when both of these stocks have not only been trading almost exactly in parallel, so watch the previous video that I talk, covered the market crash that I just uploaded earlier today. Not only is that suspicious, but the fact that they're both now re, uh, retaking their VWAPs in the last few minutes of after hours, sorry, right before after hours, that's suspicious as well. Dogecoin coming up at down 20%. Right now it's at 17 and a half. Ooh. Last summer I had fart and AMC gone up. I th you, you know what to do now. Yes, please tell me. Which, um, which book is it from? No. The verse is the book of Job. When you, no, when you fart in your wallet, now you got wait, gas money. Yes, yes, and that was the book of uh, Josiah, or <laughs> it's a famous verse. Mm -hmm. Go look it up. Book of Candace. Can this stock push a hundred and seventy, please? They're looking at GME. Uh, AMC already tapering off at 1260. That's okay. That's where we expected its price action to be. A little bit of consolidation might actually push us higher. But, you know, if the VWAP says this is the true price, I am I'm not here to, <laughs> to disagree with our volumetric weighted average price here. Uh, but GameStop just trending right between. There's no resistance at 169. Uh-oh. Back to 170. 170 has actually started to coalesce with its VWAP. So that might be what is keeping the bears strong. Uh, Cody Becker says, can you ask the Ape family if they're interested in my writing an Ape Andromo Money exclusive for min-maxing farming at PHT on Phonium's games? I have no idea uh, what that is, but I am excited to ask. There, we have... We have Put that question out there. If you guys are interested, Cody uh, is going to get his typing fingers ready. Falikar is saying, is there any possible way the hedgies could manipulate these stocks low enough that they could cover their shorts? Remember the price that they shorted them at, right? Sub $4 for GameStop, even lower for AMC. Imagine uh, the price action going down there, right? The entire market turned upside down, but all it did was drop our stocks less than double digits now. See, AMC is actually going to end the day right? eight days in a row in the green. Today in the red, but hey, it's a spectacular day of red, right? 10% down. Uh, this is the worst it gets. Is this all you have to give us, Hedgies? I expected more. I expected worse. Let's see. James L. Sturton Jr., DC, saying, we just ended a recovery wave ent entering ascending Elliott wave. Love the Elliott wave theory here. I would say that this correction here is a little bit disjointed. So if this was the corrective wave that you were mentioning, I would say that uh, at the crux of this macro Elliott wave, and I say macro in the in like the five minute uh, chart sense, we have already one, two, three, four, five parts of this Elliott wave here. So this impulse is already starting to taper off. But that doesn't mean that we should stop and lose momentum before we hit a level of resistance. That's what is curious to me. So we're going to not only find out why this bounce happened, like the video suggested, bounce alert for hashtag AMC and GME. We're also going to explore what is going to happen during the after hours. Look at that beautiful bounce. 
GameStop has gone, uh, has bounced five dollars from uh, one sixty four fifteen. That was its low. It achieved its low double bottom down here. You can see that George W. Right here. From that double bottom, GME started to face the rocket. Thrusters on. Looks like it's one o'clock on my computer, which means, ladies and gents, you have entered the after hours. Hashtag after hours with Andrew Mo Money. Copyright don't steal. <laughs> William Miranda, I ain't hear no bell. Sorry, that bell was to signify uh, the end of the trading day. <laughs> Sorry if that bell made you hear bells. Okay, I'm about to make my announcement. Once again, you guys see the title of this video. It says, I speak from the heart. Uh, if you go back and the very first 10 seconds, that message is what I'm about to repeat for you guys in about five minutes. I'll let people file in. I have a message that I need to, once again, it's already off my chest, and I need to put it back on my chest so that I can say it to you guys again. Squid Vet Ohio, I would love to know the actual number of synthetic AMC shares there are. We would love to as well. FTDs gives us only a sense. And remember, if you guys heard that super stonk, uh, AMA, we heard yesterday that FTDs really don't have a longer lifespan than a day. If I go to the FTDs here, we are going to cover a couple of the telltale signs that we have. Uh, millions, so there's millions daily of FTDs recycling through that are going to give us a little more insight about how many synthetic shares there are. Meepo didn't bark at the bell. It's because he really barks when there's a person on the other side of a door. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think we're trying to give Meepo a, a hand here. Boop the snoot. Boop. Boop. Good bounce in the last minutes, AMC, the last samurai says. Yes, good bounce indeed. If you guys are just joining us, throw some, uh, throw some ducks or gorillas in the chat. You know who you are. Uh, any of you guys have been here since 30 minutes ago, throw those scissors in the chat. Paper hands who panic sold at AMC or GME didn't expect this bounce to be only a precursor to the upwards price action that we can expect. Beautiful Elliot, uh, five part impulse wave for GME at the last few minutes of the bell. For AMC, it's mainly comprised of just one solid green candle upward. It faced a little bit of resistance here at the VWAP, but then it passed through and now trading above it. That is bullish AF. Dan Twire probably already answered, but does the SSR help at all? I don't. I didn't answer it this time around. But my general philosophy is, if you think that the SSR is the only thing preventing the the hedgies from getting their way, that is going to be a fool's errand. Okay, let's take a look at actually what the SSR trigger price was today, 12.63. We were far below. Oh, wait, we're right at the SSR trigger. Well, we definitely crossed below 12.63 today, so that was how we got on the SSR list. Let me tell you a story, sit right down, about how now we can no longer be shorted on the down ticks. That's what the short sale restriction list is for. Okay, let's see. Joji saying, we're going to flaunt the rocket. Flaunt that rocket, Joji. Come on. Yo, yo, Andrew Mark. What's going on? All right. I think it's time. Uh, I'm going to start that announcement once more. And that is, I apologize. I'm sorry for uh, take, making light of the situation, truly. It's, there's no excuse for having a like sort of under-the-table exchange of YouTube cloud or buying more AMC. I just like the stock. And at the end of the day, when I was first on uh, Trey's show, this was a couple of months ago, and he even int he introduced to me the very concept of being able to, uh, you know, say, hey, when Andrew Mo Money gets to a certain number of subscribers, Trey himself bought like, I think $1,000 of AMC there, right? I was afraid of doing that. I was like, doesn't that seem like it's towing the line between the uh, the amount of like responsibility you have as a figure, as a as a voice in the uh, the movement here, and the the amount that you like the stock, right? 
but I love this stock. I'm bullish AF on this stock. I've, I've bought dozens, hundreds of AMC in the past few weeks. So here is my, uh, my pledge. I apologize. We're never going to talk about subscribers and or like goals in exchange for these AMC or GME purchases. Instead, what we're going to do is hashtag bark for bell, which is uh, bark for what was it? Bark for buy, which is whenever Meatball barks and I can't control that, uh, we're going to buy 10 AMC shares. And if he goes ballistic out of control, I'm going to buy a whole GME share. So that's what we're going to try for today. Uh, if, that, if that works well, we're going to try that for tomorrow and then onward and onward, right? It's a learning process. And of course, uh, at 90,000, we're going to do a straight up giveaway, right? What are we giving away? I'm not sure what uh, regulation wise I'm allowed to give away. I know I can give away merch. So I will be I will be giving away whatever you guys want, maybe a hoodie from the Angelo Money store. Uh, so basically, comp anything you want from the store, and then we'll think about other giveaways that I can safely, regulatory wise, give away to subscribers of the show. So that's at 90,000 subscribers. Uh, take away everything else, right? I'm going to buy the stock because I like to buy the stock, and that's period. The next part of that is at 1,600 likes on this video, we're going to have Meatball dab, and that's going to be just the start of the tricks that Meatball can do uh, from show to show, right? He has a, actually a lot of tricks. I had a lot of free time when I first adopted him five years ago. Wow. No, four years ago. Yeah, because he's turning eight this year. So four years ago, uh, we have uh, we just have a fun a couple fun tricks, and he's going to learn how to dab. That's something that he can do on camera. So we might be able to see it on this stream. Wasn't that going to be cool? Okay, here we go. Can I have some water, please? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just me. All right, give it to me straight. What happened today, and what does it need? What does it do to our chances of a squeeze? I just doubled down today. We had covered some of the short interest data, and this is true. Vortex is is showing. Well, hold on, wait. I just want to show you. We had we have are now pushing fifty percent retracement. Here it is, twelve eighty one. We have just now pushed 1280. That was the 50% retracement back up to the January squeeze. Uh, that's why we were talking about 1458 so religiously over the past few days, because that was where we were expecting some major price action for the uh, for 68%. Sorry, 61. Let me just zoom out here. 61.8% retracement, right? We have fallen off of that level of, of retracement down to 50. And now that we're crossing back over, that bullish sign is all hands on deck. We just pushed past 1280 and now we're getting huge. Just me, we had, uh, I have a whole video about what happened to the crypto market. Essentially, China uh, came in the People's Republic, and they said, yeah, the crypto market here right now, we don't like it. Altcoins hurting the Bitcoins. The stable coins also trash. We don't want to accept anything. And that shook the crypto market to its very core. Uh-oh, Meepo's going to bark. Here it comes. There it is. So that's bar that is buy for bark. So I was, I was introduced. Okay. okay no more bark. Meatball. So no volume on these dips either people are saying so there it is people are you good How many times so that's 10 shares someone is standing on our, our patio right now so that's why i can't control these here so that's uh unlocking the shares also it pays back the community for the jump scares <laughs> that meatball uh makes whenever he barks Okay, so what I can do is I've been taught by Wally that what I do is I create new order and then I do instead of day I do oh hold on wait. I do extended hours yes and now I can place that order. Heck yeah. There it is. Hasty. Alright, bye for bark. Meatball. Uh the chat is saying it's bark for buy, <laughs> bark for buy. Bark and buy. Bark and buy. Hashtag bark and buy. Cha-ching. LMAO, great idea, says irrelevant. I think it is. 
Because you can't really control Meatball. He's a guard dog. He has this strong, like, wolf pack mentality. Quick, start driving by Moe's place as Ed Oliva. <laughs> Just start walking on my patio. <laughs> I'd be... Uh, Julie Marshall says, OMG, now my dogs are going nuts, LOL. Hey, Andrew, says Matthew Curry. What's up? So uh, I made some uh, some pretty from the bosom announcements earlier today, which is, I apologize, right? Uh, it's important to be able to say, you know, I was misguided. I was wrong. I take full responsibility. There is not going to be a 90,000 subscriber goal for buying more AMC or GME. That doesn't make sense. I like the stock enough to be able to buy it if I'm a grown-up enough. It doesn't have to be connected to my channel, right? What is going to happen on 90,000 subscribers is giving back to you guys, the subscribers, the people. When at 90,000, we're going to be giving away what uh, to, I believe we're going to have like first, second, and third place. Uh, people who are going to be able to choose something from the Andrew Mo Money store. Maybe this meatball hoodie or whatever you want uh that is what i am that's basically the extent of what i know i can promise uh, i don't know if i can promise like actual crypto or actual stocks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to figure it out and then we're going to have more details but yeah that is now the new ninety thousand subscriber goal giving back to you guys okay and giving and uh and I will say that one of the people that we pick is going to be able to have a 30-minute one-on-one with me so that you guys can talk about whatever it is. And one of the other people that uh, we pick are, is going to be able to get a shout-out for whatever, like Indiegogo, GoFundMe, uh, like charity of their choice, uh, whatever they want to be able to shout-out, that is also going to be a giveaway uh, at 90,000 subs. CT, you're a smart dude, brother. CT, I think you're a smart dude. Don Roberto at 90k should drink a whole bottle of Glen. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Roberto Gama says, My dog just attacked the mailman. Does that mean I'm buying $1,000 worth of GME? I think so. LFG. LFG. Here we go. Uh, AMC GME Stonk says, Andrew, you're doing the right thing legally. I'm glad. I'm glad. Does, 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 doesn't have to be non-sexy. <laughs> I like that. Elephant, Monty says, life is a learning curve. Every creator is winging it, has to learn along the way. I'm the one that's setting up these charts. I'm the one that's reading the news. I'm the one that's deciding when to come to you guys uh, out of my own schedule. So I'm the one that can make mistakes. So I'm the one that has to own up to it. Okay. Irrelevant says, I'm here because I think you're an intelligent man. You got class. You got humor on top of that. We need you. I know there's a gigantic ape family. AMC is the movement. That is it. That is it, brother. Uh, Frank Max says, oh, I would love to pick your brain for 30. I like that. Uh, do I have to unsubscribe and then resubscribe? No, no, no. Not at all. Linus Queen, what's going on here? Okay, so we had taken a look at AMC's now, uh, I would say, is it time to say it? Infamous rip here. <laughs> it's been famous for about eight minutes now. Uh, the first five minutes of After Hours, we had a VWAP test its support for 1263 bouncing off of that VWAP and heading up to 50% retracement of January's squeeze. From there, 1285 is now our new height for the day. What was our high? 1331, and that was closer to the earlier parts of the day. This is 1285, the highest of the after hours. And now we're trading underneath this line, essentially as resistance uh, because some people might not be able to see it, right? Some people might see that this upwards trading here and then now trading underneath as just like a, a, a other explainable, maybe unexplainable occurrence. Luckily, you're here with me, Fibonacci retracement. Uh, we now have this orange line here to show us that we're going to be struggling along here for a second before we're ready to take off. But pushing past this line in the after hours this early is a fantastic sign. Uh, Hot Cheeto is in here. What's going on? Uh, 
Let's take a look. J Rod, 537. Followed a few people, but you are one of the coolest laid back dudes. Break it down and have a fun time doing so. I do have to share more your page more often though. Thanks for the insight. J Rod, you're coming in here. Thank you. Okay, please don't waste a bottle of Glenn. How would be a waste? It goes inside me. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was here because this is a Wendy's. <laughs> okay. Uh, we do need you. We need a genius data analytics. We love data. And Meatball Kelly Jenkins come in and warm in my heart here. Warm in the bottom of my heart to my cockles. Yes, I can say those huh? words. Yes, I can say those words. YouTube, come at me. <laughs> Limit monetize me right now. I'm going to win anyway. YouTube, I'm, I'm, please. please. Please, please. I take it back. <laughs> Big Dawes Vlogs. Whoa. What's up, Big Dawes? What's going on? You know, I've never had a chance to come, have you come on the show. If you do want to, I'll drop you the link. A big Dawes in the chat right here. Very cool. Uh, together with Brooke is, is making a pretty great point right here. There it is. Apes don't fight apes. Um, okay, here comes AMC again. Here comes another AMC earthquake. So we are paying attention to a GME wedging down which is a fantastic sign. Look at this uptrend leading to a wedge forming right here. We want GME. Now, normally these patterns have to take a little bit longer than the minute chart, but we are taking this as a positive W for a GME's bounce uh, part two coming up. DeAndre Richardson. Andrew, I think I speak for most of us when I say that we appreciate you and the time you take to educate us. Honestly, it's unfair part two coming. Okay, DeAndre, I wouldn't say it's unfair. I would say that, you know, uh, I made a mistake and I'm here owning up to it. So I think that uh, in terms of fairness, this is, uh, this is good. We're healing. We're learning. We're healing. We're growing. This is the way. Ooh. I also made this announcement around 1 p.m. PST, right? And I'll, I'll make it again. Those of you who are coming in who might not have heard the announcement yet. I know people who have heard this announcement now twice. Thank you. Thank you for the patience. Some people might not have heard it yet. It's in the title. I'm speaking to you from the heart, right? There we go. Uh, okay. Let's take... Andrew, <laughs> <laughs> new drama. <laughs> new drama alert. New drama. Why don't... Did you sneeze? All oh right. my god! I was, Chat, I was, you heard me sneeze. No, no, you're right. You're right. You did sneeze. I, my brain is somewhere else entirely. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I do say bless you. I did. My brain was just somewhere else entirely. Okay, if you usually do, then how come... You have the opportunity to say it now. Yes, so? bless you. <laughs> the Lord of Silverbacks bless you. <laughs> bless you to, until the end of time. <laughs> All right. AMC or tech speak on this. What's going on? AMC's short interest now at seven and a half percent down. I need to find some. I need to find or text and have them do me a splain. Django Smith. Yeah, good ish. Own up to that. That's what true apes do. I'm back on w with you. What's up, Django? Uh, ah, snap. Okay, so we're going to take a look at what Ortex has been saying. AMC short interest update six hours ago. Ortex, come on, what's up with the 7.5% here? So short interest six hours ago was at 16. It dropped down to another 1.5%. Uh, this is starting to become a little ridiculous. We know that there are naked shorts out there, and there are reports that naked shorting could be uh, driving the percent of free float far above 100%. And this is back to the math behind, hey, do we control more than 100% of the free float? You have to give up streaming early because of a dumb algorithm. Every day I choose to stream you instead of everyone because of your knowledge. DeAndre Richardson, thank you. 
Thank you so much. And it's not like I'm giving up my early morning streaming, right? If there is an opportunity to talk about fantastic price action, you know, those of you who have the bell on, right? You know, I'm going to be in here. Uh, let's see. Thomas Singleton is more concerned about the buy-in prices. <laughs> Uh, the sneeze already happened. People keep seeing the sneeze happen. But have you looked at the short sneeze index? <laughs> the sneeze happened? Have you seen the short sneeze signals? Uh, we <laughs> Hashtag gamma sneeze. Oh, man. You, you want to be paid for your sneezes? That's a fetish. No, okay, we have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Slapping it hard, Jezebel saying. Dark pools are throwing off the short numbers immensely. Now that's the problem, Leatherneck Ninja. That dark pools have still have a place in driving the price action. Now that's much more of uh, the interpretation of where dark pools are coming from, which is that if you uh, if you take a market maker or a clearinghouse like Citadel uh, or the many Citadel sister arms, that they can essentially take your millions of transactions, turn them into thousands, or take your billions of transactions, turn them into millions, and then execute whichever one they would prefer not affect the price action on the dark pools, right? Or any other non-ATS OTC market. Sneezegate 2021. <laughs> so not so much that is hiding the short interest, it's hiding the downward selling pressure. Sorry, it's, high, it's due on the opposite. It's only highlighting the downward selling pressure, and it is not highlighting the buying pressure. Well, we see these uh, close to after hours, right before the uh, uh, after hours begin. This major bounce just shows a little bit of the true price of GME and AMC revealing itself. The mother of all short sneezes. Sneezes in the chat. Come on. Hashtag gamma Stop. sneeze. <laughs> and they're corny. Oh. Melvin did not, you, the, the blunt truth, don't spread FUD in the chat. I love you. Uh, you got, you, you're good people, but we know that certain short sellers are trying to cover their position in AMC. Uh, and Ortex has been maybe on the down low, starting to stifle their reporting on it. But this is the very last time. Uh, oh, they actually apologize for something. Huge apologies from the Ortex team. See, this is the problem. Like, I am, I am on the receiving end of this. People coming into the chat and being like, what's Andrew apologizing for? And then I have to come in and be like, Ortex, what are you apologizing for? Okay, here. When calculating the average utilization numbers yesterday, data from some of the security lenders were missing and therefore not included in that calculation. You know that data is plural. This is the most important thing you have to come away with, is that data from some of the security index lenders were missing. Come on. <laughs> this was an unprecedented issue and affected daily utilization rates across all 50,000 stocks we cover. Okay, Ortex, thanks for clearing that up here. Current short interest for AMC is 16.11%. That was seven hours ago. <laughs> Chat. Cover? Did she cover her sneeze? <laughs> did she? <Hey. laughs> when is the short sneeze coming? <laughs> oh no! I don't hate you guys. Yes. <laughs> short sneeze. <laughs> so funny. Oh, what are my thoughts about like, brokers delaying orders? Is that happening today, or are you talking about like previous? Uh, Previous, because I don't think they're going to be uh, delaying it today from all the downward price action here. So AMC already had an opportunity to show its uh, its true price at twelve eighty five. Now uh, diving down below its VBOP, already trying to make its way back up, making its way downtown, walking fast. That's AMC in a nutshell. Da 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 da. -da. Uh, Alex Blunt, I think it's a good time to be able to address uh, once again. For the sake of everyone hearing about it, I'm so sorry, I'll keep this less than 30 seconds for people who have already heard this. This is from my heart. I apologize. 
right, connecting subscribers and likes to whether or not I like the stock enough to buy it makes no sense. It's the it's like math. It's like when the like counter doesn't match the number of people watching. It doesn't make sense. So from now on, what we're gonna do is when I'm uh, it's a fun little thing to watch Meatball here. Whenever he barks, I'm gonna buy ten shares of AMC like I just did in the live chat. And when he barks so much, he jumps out of his cubby. I'm gonna buy a whole share of GME. Uh, and that's just for today. We'll find out if that's fun, and then we'll keep doing that. And then for 90,000 subscribers, not going to touch AMC and GME. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one person to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one with me and for 30 minutes. We're going to choose one person uh, uh, to get whatever they want from the merch store. And then we're going to have one person shout out whatever they want, either Indiegogo, a, a nonprofit, a charity that they care about. Uh, and that is, uh, those are the new, like, Andrew apologizes, uh, well, let's make a better tomorrow <laughs> let's make a better tomorrow starting today right for the channel but also for the community of apes who have been hurting they have been hurting because drama does separate apes but apes don't fight apes i accept your criticism and i'm changing and also we're going to do sneezes here so we are actually uh, 700 likes away from meeple doing a trick we're going to have him in his cubby and he's going to dab for you guys that's one of many tricks that he knows Okay, did I say V-pop? I did. I was hoping nobody expected me. Okay, let's see. Let's meet the sneeze queen. <laughs> <laughs> Apollo sneezes from everyone. Apollo, please, I Apollo sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Ugh, that was funny. Okay. Uh JVLN says, thank you for not being a tool anymore. You know, we are we're working on it. <laughs> I said thank you for not being a tool. <laughs> what can we do? Nostalgia says, I accept your apology. Also, if you could reduce how often you ask for likes and subs, it's too it's far too often, my friend. You got it, right? I am hearing you guys. This is the this is the new show. I'll do it when people show up, right? I'll do it at the beginning of the video, but it's not going to be rampant. Like, that's, you're right. It is too much. We're, we're, we're here to be able to defeat the algorithm together, but eventually you guys are just going to know, right? You guys don't need me to remind you. So uh, each time that the like is pressed, or Angel gets its wings, but I don't have to be mentioning it every single, like, five minutes in a row. Okay, let's see what other kind of questions people have here. Options expire that cannot be diamond handed by the stock. Justin Case is making a good case. Uh, he is uh, telling you guys about the fact that there are uh, opportunities for you to basically be sniped. It's like payment for order flow, right? You get sniped against your position because your data shows that you would like to buy, let's say, 100, contract, 100 shares. It's one contract of a, at the money call, right? As soon as that happens, the, the market maker that makes that trade for you can buy the 100 shares so that they can hedge and be delta, uh, and be delta neutral and then buy a, call, a put option for exactly the same strike, uh, strike price and then immediately exercise those. So as they do, that negative pressure uh, pushes the price, stock, the price of the stock down and then you'll never reach your strike price within the expir expiration date and you are holding, you're just giving your premiums away for almost no reason. So that is a married put conversion and that's when the, uh, the inner machinations of a options chain can actually end up hurting the stock instead of just buying and holding. That's the difference between buying a stock long and holding a uh, options long. It's your channel and you need to grow. And I, it's my channel and I need it now. Martin Rivera saying, you, I'm the goat. No, Martin, you're the goat. Don't forget. G-O-T. <laughs> goat. <laughs> you're the greatest of time. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. 
uh, together with Brooke is saying, for those who are wondering why it's a good idea to smash the like button for them to keep asking, it's so that newbies, apes can find these videos uh, and understand AMC even more and hodl. That's, that's, that is the mechanical truth. And you know what? If I need to remind the people whenever I say it much less, right? But whenever I say it, I will. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, Alex. No, that's a good point. Casey McLaughlin, I'm predicting another bloodbath, trying to get us up to, trying to get us to sell when it gets back up to 15. You should, they should know the apes by now, right? They probably were hoping to get the price up just enough so that we have a good amount of retail investors in here, so that the next inevitable dip, the retail investors hurt the stock so much that even hard, like iron hard apes decide to sell. And that's not going to happen. Right, <laughs> you're playing with the wrong team here, Citadel. Uh, that's the truth. It, we, I'm assuming that Citadel doesn't have like a Chinese operative in the the government of China uh, waiting to crash the crypto market, right? So I'm imagining that this crash was just some inevitability that one of the uh, the projections that Citadel was running ended up coming true, which is one day there is going to be a crash. And if the price gets high enough so that randos have jumped on, right, people who don't care about the squeeze, people who just want to be able to say they made money on AMC or GME, uh, then they'll, they'll get their day. And that's not what we're here for. Uh... Holy crap, what's next says I'm back. I heard on the grapevine that I can watch a sneeze happen on Mo Money's channel. Okay, I can't sneeze on command, yo. Uh, Talks Sick is saying, can you explain why Doge is something to consider? I missed that info. Yeah, Doge is down uh, nearly, that was down even further. Let's actually take a look at those crypto markets for a hot second. So Doge is here double, but let me put BTC here. So Doge is currently, uh, it had its day down to 20 cents. Now, if you, if you were awake at, uh, what is this, 9 a.m. Eastern, if you're awake at 6 a.m. in the morning over here for me, uh, you would have been making some serious bounce tendies from the crypto market today. So Ethereum bounced, uh, Bitcoin bounced. I was actually tempted to buy right around here, right before a second dip, but if, if Bitcoin has almost recovered all the way back up to 40 grand, where it would be, according to this, no, it's still missing like 1,500 in order to break even for the day. But Bitcoin suffered a crazy blow. Uh, Ethereum did too, Doge. And right now, Doge is looking like it has an opportunity, especially with Elon still backing it, to be a steal. That said, you shouldn't be thinking about, you know, catching a falling knife, especially as this dip is likely going to continue uh, into tomorrow, right? Not so much of a bloodbath as the news, the bad news has already been taken, thought about, now, uh, in the models updated with the newest hyperparameters for the whatever price uh, these high-frequency trading algorithms think that the stock should go for. So in that sense, you are looking at a prolonged bearish slump at least for a couple more days for the most of the stock market. And here it is. I'm cool says, bless you. May all your germs live homeless. Bless you. May all your germs live homeless. <laughs> uh, maybe. May lady. Irrelevant says, institutions made big purchases recently. Doesn't that build supply of shares to loan? Thus the drop in short per interest percent. Yes, some exited maybe. The dark pool situation is screaming foul play. Yes. Being able to pay attention to the dark pool is your God-given duty on FINRA. Let's actually do it right now. Let's actually take a look at FINRA to be able to see where the ATS, the FINRA ATS data. So we have OTC ATS on non-ATS transparency. We have quarterly statistics. Hold on, let me see if I can just pull it up before I show it to you guys. We've done this like months ago on a different video entirely. Did I misspeak about uh, AMC and GME? Sometimes I do that. 
But you can just look at the markets right here. AMC is down 10%. GME is down only 6.5%. Apologies. Okay, so... Martin Rivera. It's, it's so much love from this man. Hold on. Maybe I can just search... Uh, FINRA Dark Pool. Be able to get that data. FINRA makes Dark Pool data available free to investing public. This was in 2014. Free of charge. Okay, you have to press agree, and now we're cooking with Grisco. Here it is. So you put in OTC non ATS data. What if we look at OTC ATS data instead? So we look at monthly, then AMC. And so we're not going to be, since it's monthly, we're only going to be able to see last month's data. AMC. Oh. <laughs> Look how many shares, details. Okay, so this is the month of March. That's not even last month's data. This is two months ago. But look at Citadel holding its half a billion shares here. So that's half a billion shares on off exchange, right? Over the counter, non ATS, non dark pool data details. So this is giving us only a piece of that pie, but you guys can tell the three main villains against the. Uh, of the AMC world here, Citadel, Virtue, G1, and then slightly lower you have two, Sigma, UBS, Jane Street, blah, blah, blah. But Citadel is the most important piece overall. This was free since 2014. There you go. Boom. Data for your brain. Everyone still doing the sneeze, sneeze jokes here? <laughs> <laughs> sneeze is in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see them so the mother of all short sneezes soon. Apollo sneeze. Uh I want a BTS sandwich is saying something. Let's see. Was making shrinky dinks with the kiddo and missed the first part of the stream. Anything major? Yeah, I would say, but that's okay. <laughs> I would say something major, but you're good. Muerte family. Only 180 bucks more for millions just makes sense. This difference between 1250 and 16 and 165 is peanuts compared to 100k versus 10 million. Uh, I would say, I say there's truth to what. Like the, the the scale of the numbers at risk here really is how do I deal with a billion dollar problem? Throw a couple million at it, short it down to a million, and see the rest of the market panic and collapse. That is what the villains uh, are trying to think about when they try and attack our very institutions. And luckily, we have some pretty smart apes, PhDs, researchers, people who spend most of their waking day outside of their actual full-time jobs to work on this. Tornadoes in the chat. <laughs> What's the news? What's the, am I, did I miss something? Tornadoes in the chat. Uh, no cure. I mentioned that message three times today. So you can zoom on to the very beginning of this live stream to hear me answer that. Oh, yeah. Did the SEC have another closed door meeting today? Is this the sunshine, sunlight project thing? Because I've been hearing about that. Oh, BTS sandwich coming in with the positive feels here. Thank you. It ain't a squeeze anymore. It's the sneeze. One billion shares traded in dark pools. Holy Toledo. Remember, this is volume. So this could be either direction. So it's total number of shares traded either way. This is volume, not the actual shares themselves. Like, not the count of the shares. There's not, if you guys do SQL, it's not count distinct. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, institutional ownership up. 
institution GMA institutional ownership down to 56.21%. And yet, and then Martin is saying that it's going down. Which of those two is it? Hold on. If you sneeze on the moon, does it just keep traveling forever? No, it'll just hit you on the back of the head. <laughs> That's, that's science. Uh, Chris Daly says, how about sharing some good news about Doge and GameStop? GameStop, along with 41,000 other trader, retailers around the U.S. and Canada, can make purchases with Doge and other cryptos via Flexa. Ooh. Good, good ad for Flexa. <laughs> Beta sneeze. Time decay. Uh, Moon Swiss B AMC. Uh, have a good night in Swiss. How do I say that in Swiss? Good night in Swiss. Do you, is Swiss is a link. Uh, Swiss German. The whole language. Guete Morge. That's good morning. So it's Guten Ube. Have a good night. <laughs> hmm. I, sh I should grow a handlebar mustache. Now that should take about a decade. <laughs> Science. William coming in with the science. Can you explain what after hours means? Are retail investors still able to buy stock? Yes, I just bought some because of meatball bark. You can. If you go ahead and, uh, and get an application that gets you into the after hours and pre-market, such as Weeble, right? You don't even have to. What, my philosophy is you just need more ways to access the market. So you need to go uh, and doesn't matter what it is, but if you want to choose Weeble, use the affiliate link down below and get yourself two free stocks. That's besides the point. You want to be able to use the technical analysis tools that Weeble provides for free. You don't have to trade on it. You just have to use the same indicators that I have been providing you guys here so that when the, the day is trading, right, and you guys don't have me live, you can look at it yourself. Uh, if this is too confusing to set up, you can just search Andrew Mo Weeble to see exactly where my indicators are. If it's still too confusing to set up and you want something simple, uh, TradingView is also free, and it provides you, uh, if you guys get cheat code, not free, uh, you can get clear and compelling four out of four buy signals. For example, look at this one. Uh, let me just move this a little bit. Look at this one for Riot Blockchain. Someone just asked earlier. On the five minute chart, this four out of four buy signal would have brought you off from 23 to 24. So right away, that is a 5% uh, rise. Like it's not too shabby. And it gets you there right away. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Chris Daly knows nothing about Flexa, so it was not an ad for Flexa. Okay, we have some green. Uh, a green. AMC trading below its uh, simple moving average here. I use the 15 day simple moving average. Seems like it's keeping a pretty tight cap on its price action as of right now. BWAP not really taking much of a hit, just one cent down to 12.73. So still holding on tight. Remember, aggregate, smooth it in your brain, smooth that price action to uh, the simple indicators that tell you where that price action is actually going versus where it is currently. It's like dodging a dodgeball, right? You need to know where the dodgeball is going, not where it is currently. Georgie Service wants to take a look at FAMI on cheat code. We got it. I also thought that for the first time they pitched it to me, they pitched uh, Chico. I was like, that's a very good name for an algorithm. And they're like, no, it's not Chico. It's cheat code. Oh, that's not as good. All right, so that buy signal earlier would have gotten you up into the stratosphere with cheat code. You might have, uh, you might have seen a little bit of waning and got scared but if you stayed strong, you would be all the way up here at 43 cents. Now that said, 
doesn't show a sell signal yet, but it will likely soon. And just like this downward consolidation, you're likely going to see more of that price action, just uh, if not in the after hours, right when the market's open. Bum, bum, bum. Matthew Curry, thanks, buddy. Heart, and then the heart emoji. Um, irrelevant, likey, likey. Uh, anyone else loving the play on words that GameStop YouTube channel throws out like this every other day? We do this every day. It's every day, bro. Uh, this is the kind of community that we have fostered and will continue to foster for a long time. Okay, let's take a look at some news. People are saying like there's fun news. Could AMC be another short squeeze run? Hip ranks. I'm sure. Why you would think that? Ah, it's a Yahoo Finance article. So I can read it over here. And we can watch the charts over here. AMC be on another short squeeze run from this morning. Okay, so this is already a little bit outdated. Past month, shares of AMC Entertainment have traded in a relatively narrow band around $10. SSR is in effect for AMC. It was, it was in effect basically in the beginning of the day. So if you thought that the SSR would have going to save the price action for AMC, we didn't really see much of that. But after hours, we have already started to see this major rip. So hey, uh, it must be because I'm here. Kidding. Joke. Uh, Joji Source bought on a whim. Well, you are up, sir. You are up. Martin Rivera, it's every day, bro. Uh, over the past month, shares of AMC have traded in a relatively narrow band, around 10 bucks. That's true. In recent days, though, we've seen AMC surge on retail interest. Right, folks? It looks like the short squeeze is back on. The retail investors market out there, and the retail investors are certainly having their day in the sunshine. It, did they write this article like the night of? <laughs> They're like, oh, wow. Uh, Pre-market's been pretty rough. I guess I'll just post the article anyway. That dude over there says, ah, yeah, I love this community. Don't forget to follow Young Bull and Weeble in the trenches type of updates. Ooh, okay. Have not heard of that, but I will give him a look-see. Uh, should I get a Lambo or a McLaren? Ooh. You know, I know that the world is going a little cray-cray for electric vehicles recently, not just for investing, but for, like, uh, I think Ford's new F-150 electric just got the attention of like all of them, all of the U.S. because uh, El Presidente rode around in it yesterday or maybe earlier today. So if you guys are interested, who, how many of you are interested in that kind of like spectacle? Like if if like a politician or someone uh, in like the public eye goes and drives an electric vehicle, does that make you want to buy one? I'm just curious. Before buying any stock, investors would be wise to perform some basic fundamental analysis. Uh, not for AMC. Investing in the trendy stock is exciting. There are certainly a possibility of another short squeeze from here. The idea that could stock could go to the moon. This is just word vomits right now. Those who are looking to put a few shekels to work on a long shot bet should go for it and buy AMC stock. They still manage. In this bullish article is mostly bullish, and yet it still uses language as if it's talking down to AMC. It's crazy. Mm. Love the Bible quote, says Matthew Curry. Lambo is going EV. Okay, there it is. Uh, Joji Soros says, I will admit I bought during January, sold when it went back up, then came across this channel and decided to buy back in. Joji Soros coming in. Uh, BM wets sure. Uh, the main reason is that China came in and wrecked their crypto markets and kind of dragged everybody else down with them. Uh, you can imagine that, like people with people with stakes in crypto also now have to uh, are likely buying on margin with crypto as well. So the large institutions that then might have getting gotten close to a margin call because crypto got lower and lower uh, ended up having to be able to. Um, sell off the rest of the market. Uh, let's see. Screw that. GT500, says Viper. 
Let's see. Cybertruck will be the vehicle of choice. Range Rover, Sport SVR, or BMW X5M. I think I have that car. <laughs> um, I have a I have a very similar car. We just rescued it from uh, from San Diego. Uh, Muggles says I'm cool. <laughs> Am I playing IPOE? I want to. Uh, LA $5 billion stadium. Yeah, SoFi has been on that stadium for a while now. So that's not new news, I don't think, right? Unless SoFi is buying another stadium. Uh, Tesla truck that's coming out in 2022. Now that's cool. That's a cool idea. Because I just want my truck and my dog and my guitar. Oh, you okay? Here's a treat for you, bud. Nice. I can't, I can't read that. No! I'm blind. <laughs> uh, uh, that says something about, like, Ip, funny colors. I don't know, I, don't, I, I, think, I think that's what it said, I'm blind. Yes, people, Elon Musk is not having uh, his demagogue, like, status play well right now. He's essentially falling strongly out of favor. Uh, I, rem I was watching some Brian Jung, some good old B. Brian this morning, and he was like, he did a funny Elon impression. Uh, that doesn't sound like Elon, but he, it was a funny impression uh, either way. That essentially said Elon thought that he had the magic touch with Dogecoin $1 on SNL, and then people didn't really like the SNL skits, which makes sense because SNL isn't like a surefire hit in terms of the haha -ha department and when that happened I, he might have just been like you know what i'm doubling down <laughs> i'm doge all the way get out of here uh, ryan b says everyone talking about lambos i just want to get the oscar meyer wiener truck <laughs> yeah yeah i think i like this guy the Oscar Mayer Wiener truck. Would you? Jinx. Do I owe you a soda? I guess I just can't talk anymore. So I guess the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rest of the stream will be mimed. Scooter. I can, I can dub. Please. please. What Scoot do you want to say? Uh, I want to say Scooter knows the way. Oh, that worked. Are y'all talking about some other stocks right now? King Ape, tell me, a, tell me what other stock you want to listen to. Uh, Dan Healy wants a catamaran and a quiet life, thanks. Nice home away from home. A little, uh, a little hammock. My husband thinks I'm crazy to think I'll be rich on AMC, but yet he already has his Lambo color picked out for him to, for me to buy him. Together with Brooke, that's one of the funniest things I've heard. Yes, that is the attitude we should have. Okay, investing in the trendy stock is exciting, and there is uh, certainly the possibility of blah, blah, blah. This is, not, uh, this is not DD. This is not news. On the other hand, long-term conservative investors might want to steer clear. Not news. For one, the capital's, company's current market capitalization is roughly 50% higher than it was during the best days of AMC's previous all-time highs. That doesn't matter, right? We're talking about the short squeeze here. That's right. It's valued more highly than ever before by a large margin amidst uncertainty around future cash flows. That's FUD. Back to the movies. Many agree that pent-up demand is likely to fill theaters to capacity. Like, we, I cannot wait to be maskless in a theater. It's coming up in like a month or two. Really, right? It's coming up this summer, if not this fall. It's going to be here, and it's going to blow AMC stock wide open. Uh, King Genie wants to take a look at the Raiyai. Okay, so... Lordstown Motors Core, just real quick. Lordstown had a bit of a run this morning when the rest of the market was tanking. Uh, and then it got that uh, pretty strong two out of four. Uh, actually, that's three out of four sell signal. You would have gone out and you would have felt good about it. You would have been like three out of four buy signal over on over here, three out of four sell signal over here. Uh, yeah, I'm out of here. Made yourself the solid 930 to... 1157 that is a solid like 25 percent rip and then you would have got it now 
Yeah. Uh, thanks, Cheat Code. Lord's Town, you're currently hovering around an overbought area, but you're not quite there yet. Not quite at a sell signal quite yet. The Imalea. Doge should we buy? I've been thinking about Doge. I've been dreaming about that Doge coin. So on the 5 minute, Doge has had a f f 4 out of 4 buy signal here. That brought us up uh, from 24 cents all the way to 37. Like, if you were even scalping Doge, right now is actually a fantastic time for the crypto market. Because we haven't seen this kind of volatility in quite a while. But if you're, if you're scalping blind, you're going to lose money. That's why day trading is not a good idea unless you know what you're doing. So if you have something like Cheat Code that could help you out, uh, you could have taken this wave up. And then you would actually be sitting pretty with uh, this 4 out of 4 buy. This, is, this 4 out of 4 buy was apparent on every single crypto this morning uh, in terms of what Cheat Code was offering. So we had Doge here with a 4 out of 4 buy. We have uh, Ethereum with a solid 4 out of 4 buy. That's what we covered in my last video. Go check it out if you haven't yet. After this live stream, of course. So... One, two, three, four. So from there, you would have caught the very bottom of the dip. And then you would have been like, whew, saved myself a lot of money. Um, Jessica probably wants to start a college fund for her kids and let my her husband uh, qu quit his 100-hour week job and be home more. Yes, what, what simple goals. We just don't want our loved ones to work to the death. Can you explain what a fire sale is and, what, and is that what we're seeing? Yeah, this is very similar to the double-digit uh, dips that we saw on much of the market during that March, uh, sorry, the March 2020 uh, Rollback, global recession, whatever you want to call it. When COVID hit hard, uh, the market crashed. That's when I bought into Amazon. And I think I'm up almost 100% on Amazon. Or 50 to 100%, can't remember. But it's a, it's a ton. Uh, Dylan Garrett, go ahead and check out that message that I've uh, said once, twice, and three times. It's an, apologize. It's a, an apology from my heart uh, to talk to you about Stuff, stuff that happened this morning. Important for you to know. Apollo sneeze. I Apollo sneezed. What software am I saying? I'm saying cheat code algorithm. So let me, let me pin that in the chat. What software am I saying? Here. Uh, this, this would have helped you buy the crypto dip. Boom. Very important over in TD Ameritrade today says, I want that. They just lifted the trading restriction on GME, meaning you can buy the stock or options using your margin buying power. Okay, I didn't even realize. That that was going to be an issue. <laughs> oh, they want to ban you. They want to ban you for what you said about popcorn. Oh, never mind. What connection? What are you talking about? Sne oh, Achoo! Oh my god, a balloon! Achoo! Oh my god, he's sneezing! Achoo! Meatball's just so freaked out. He's like, what? Balloon, sneezing. Oh my god. When okay, if Meatball sneezes... That some, something crazy is going to have to happen. If, <laughs> if Meatball sneezes instead of Barks. Squeeze for sneeze. I don't think Meatball's ever sneezed on camera. When he does, that might trigger the squeeze. It might trigger the sneeze. Should we, should we, we can do it live. Aww, PTS sandwich. Thank you. I, I have no idea. I'm still like a full grown man, and I have no idea when someone's super nice to me what to say. So I really do appreciate BTS Sandwich. Uh, let's see, what cloud do I use for cheat code? So we go over to cheat code, and then we look at the 
settings down here. And then you can take a look at, hold on, is this right? Still not it. Cheat code setting down here. Now you can take a look at my settings here. You can pause, you can do whatever you want. Take a look at my settings. Okay, there you go. There you go. Those are my settings for cheat code. Uh, gummy bear overlord. If you if you should be able to be set up, use the same settings that I did, uh, and you should be all good to go. But yeah, let me know how you how that works. Come back and tell me some feedback about cheat code so I can give it to the founders in uh, in like a, a week or so of using it. All right, back to the movies. People just keep talking about AMC, blah blah blah. However, movie theaters have capacity limits. I don't think that's gonna be an issue. Especially since the CDC is like, you can take off your mask almost anywhere. Additionally, deferred rent and other liabilities. By the way, check the actual regulations. That Don't take my word as rumor. Uh, check the actual CDC regulations. Uh, therefore, AMC likely will not be profitable for some time. AMC might be irrationally priced at current levels based on speculative hysteria. Don't forget how they talk about us, guys. Don't forget about how they talk to about apes. When we talk about ape infighting... It's really embarrassing that they still think that we are hysterical, that we're speculative, that we are, what else is it? That we have shekels <laughs> uh, and, and that we're trendy. I think that's the most, that's the easiest way to basically shoo us off of their shoulder. They, uh, telling us that we're just trendy, like dummies who don't know what we're doing. No, we've been doing the research forever. We know what we're doing. Okay, bottom line, we've all had a year away from the movies and many would agree that dinner and a movie would sound good about now. On the other hand, streaming platforms and large Hollywood production studios have had a year to shift over their business models towards a future without movie theaters. Movie theaters may not be quite done yet. However, attendance numbers were already plummeting prior to the pandemic. They always like to say that. It's not prior to the pandemic anymore. <laughs> Like the pandemic is, We're it's now it, after, you know? it's, yeah, if anything, you have to talk about what's going to happen after the pandemic. Come on now. Andrew Warrington, if you want to talk about uh, data science, a lot of my very beginning videos were all about data science. And I talk about what it's like to work as a data scientist and how to get a job as a data scientist. So just go to my videos and sort by oldest. Yeah, those, they, they call us crazy kids. Uh, let's see. What will I do next? Holy crap, what's next? I like how your username is on brand with your questioning. Uh, what I'm going to do, and I and I now open the floor to you guys and ask you guys what you want to do with your attendees, but I am starting a nonprofit that is going to focus on uh, financial education for middle school to high school kids. It's like a Kumon for finances. Like you can send your kids there and they're going to be like, mom, I don't want to learn about, you know, Roth IRA and I don't want to learn about depreciation. And your mom is going to be like, no, you do have to. You have to understand the tax code for like, uh, I, I like getting a, more, a 30 year mortgage versus a 15 is fixed. Like the, all of these mumbo jumbo that they honestly have not taught you in schools. Raise your hand if you think you've been taught that like with, within a certain level of... Um, a professional like teaching in your public schools even in your private schools i bet that there's none of this financial education that is just um, abundant across the internet right and even though you can learn spanish from duolingo it's not like it's part of your actual like childhood where your brain is uh, more flexible and you can learn things a little more easily so in that sense make it make it easier for schools to be able to integrate this kind of education Uh, Jessica Bell says, I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. Everyone look at me because I'm sailing on a boat. Ichiba Senpai says, Sup, Andrew. Miss you, man. Aw. Thanks for dropping in, man. Okay. Andrew, AMC's valuation does not make sense today. The stock could surge on another massive wave of retail buying, but if laws of finance still hold, this stock could nosedive back to Earth. See? Don't forget. Don't forget how this... uh. 
the the FUD is the main point of these articles and the reason why we have to we have to embrace and learn from what this FUD is actually trying to reveal is that one the fight's still on it's still golden it's still a golden fight because if they uh, if there was no squeeze potential left they wouldn't still be talking about it and uh, and this comes to attach directly here it's the number one story right here an AMC be on another short squeeze run. So uh, apes or perhaps retail investors who don't know anything about the story jump on to that, uh, that article and then they read the FUD and they're like, hmm, much wow, GameStop. You can use Dogecoin at GameStop other retailers. Now that is good news. Jim Cramer on market sell-off and Bitcoin plunge. I don't even want to read that. Hey, Jessica Johnson, welcome to the Mo Monkey Gang. You are now a Special Operations Infantry member of the Moon Platoon, and I thank you for joining. I remember the, uh, the I'm a Boss, the Lonely Island songs, and that was one of my faves. Okay, so we have a 30 second clip about Jim talking about the market sell off today, Mr. Kramer. I, I, I loved seeing him in the big short. I was rewatching it earlier today, so early yesterday, and, uh, and I forgot that he's in there. That's fun. And if you guys are trying to remember when he's in there, he's in there for like a quick segment. The actual Jim Kramer, not played by someone else. So, Jim Kramer on the market sell off, let's listen for 30 seconds. Maybe. Well, obviously, sell off. We got to 10 to 1 uh, negative to positive. My uh, late friend, uh, uh, Mark Haynes, always said I just did an NFT. I just did an NFT for his family for charity. Um, auction off a moment where he said it's time to buy. It was the bottom. Nobody else was even thinking about the bottom. This was in, in uh, way back in 2009. And uh, that's reminiscent of what's happening today. You get 10 to 1 negative to positive, then you have to do some buying. That's what we're doing for action order. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's Jim <laughs> right there. <laughs> what can you say? You want to send me a shirt? I just wear a small, surprisingly. No, I, I don't fit mediums very well. Like they shrink in the wash, yo. Okay, well, it's your choice. You can choose small or medium, but I prefer small, to the P.O. box in the description down below. Okay. Oh. Kramer's thoughts on the sell-off in crypto and the markets. How much of the decline in the market has to do with the plummeting of all sorts of alternative currencies or assets or cult stocks or whatever. Oh, they're calling us cult stocks now. When you see Bitcoin or Ethereum or the stock of Tesla rolling over, does it impact the entire stock market? When tens of billions of dollars of an asset like Bitcoin gets obliterated, it's a cause and effect between the S&P 500 and the losses sustained. Yeah, this is basically what we're saying so far. Like, some of these truths are so obvious that uh, it becomes pretty clear. Oh, let's see. Even the Jims, Jim Cramers of the world are here. Huh? Chris Daly says they think they're super smart already because they make a garbage finance class in school. They seriously learn nothing useful. Learning supply and demand in school, in economics, is not the same as learning personal finance, right? You don't need to understand, like, how macroeconomics works. You don't even understand how microeconomics work. You just need home economics. <laughs> Get your finances straight. Uh, Chris Daly says, that's a great idea. I swear I've had tried so hard to get my 14 and 17 year old kids to take an interest in the stock market and the value of money. They see me making mo money and they still don't care. Kids, what are you going to do? There are some big directors who don't want to work for Netflix or Amazon and will continue to work with studios and release movies for theaters. And that's a good point, right? Supply and demand. What do I think about Meet Kevin running for governor? I, I support it. Meet, <laughs> I don't know anything about his policies, but I would like to see California be the first um, governor 
state as well as the YouTubernator state. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Like, you know, I'm from a state where all of our governors are, are criminals. <laughs> uh, it's coming. Pritzker, something's going to come happen to Pritzker. It's, it's just a matter of time. Uh, I have no idea. I have no uh, disclaimer. I have no idea what I'm talking about. But uh, Illinois doesn't have a great track record for governors. And at this rate, everything about Meet Kevin is out in the open. So how much more of a scandal could there be, be if he gets elected, for example, right? That's the kind of like logical approach I'm going to have, which is, hey, if you're going to vote for me, Kevin, because that's funny or because you want to see the, like the, the democratic system be turned on its head, um, you know, <laughs> that's not a bad call, especially since uh, like eventually people are going to start making some real political reforms and maybe not allow YouTubers to run for governor in tint. But for now. If it's if he's allowed, then it's time to go all in. Pritzker and his toilets. I believe that's the uh that's his wife is the is the toilet Pritzker. <laughs> hmm. Achido says me Kevin has my vote. Uh Kevin has so many good ideas. Hope he wins hundred percent, says Kelly KX. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad he actually has good policies. Uh, California forest fires and how they could be prevented. Ah, that would be great if someone could actually take like a strong stance towards the environment in California. All right, so this is the after hours show, not the political show. So we're going to take one quick, another quick look at whether or not Ortex is giving us a signal of uh, how they want to go about this. Do you want to talk about AMC's short interest continuing to decrease or not? I feel like I'm the, like, I don't want to be the person in the middle looking at your, like, short interest falling and being like, what's going on here, Ortex? Maybe we can just look at the FINRA report and see it get updated. I'm going to go pull up the FINRA report. So we currently have 1489% of the short interest of free float. AMC short interest at 87.55 mil. That's the last time that the FIN report updated. Or is it an Ortex? 73.9. There is 15 million sh uh, shares missing from the FIN report that Ortex is reporting. Uh, as in uh, the opposite, there's 15 million shares missing from Ortex that Finra is miss uh, is not is reporting. So, what do you guys think about that? I'm gonna go in the chat. Uh, Mohammed says his wedding is on June 19th. Hopefully, they'll have his profits before then. Hey, happy early congratulations! Uh. Jibba says, Chicago's governor sucks. I like how you said Chicago's governor, not Illinois' governor. Uh, they also applied to be Meet Kevin's marketing staff. Ooh, that's pretty dope. Oh, why? Uh, let's see. Mr. Ryder, out for the night. Out like a light into the night. There you go. Chris Rakus, have a good night. He did that because Elon trashed California. Me, Kevin took it back later. Okay, so sorry, I'm trying not to read about me, Kevin anymore. Uh, okay, fundamentals, short interest, and then year to date, 19.56. So FINRA is reporting 19.56. Ortex is reporting. 14.89 that's a five percent discrepancy of course finra had been reporting 19 since april 30th so they are well actually the last time they reported it was on this they've been reporting this number since the 30th which means that bi-weekly we should have seen an update already 
but maybe it's delayed. Okay, that's the uh, AMC short interest update. Uh, oh, Joji, see you soon. Uh, holy crap, what's next? Says tomorrow will be repeated today. Employment figures will be high. Employment figures? Or unemployment figures? Why would it be a repeat of today if employment figures are high? Um. Hungry Howie, why is data on shorts completely missing or unknown? Because they have no obligation to report consistently, right? This is one of the things that we were trying to fight for on the, uh, on the front lines of the congressional hearing. When uh, Alexis Goldstein was asked about her professional uh, like opinion on the, the nature of payment for order flow, for example, Right, they, she was like, "Yeah, you should just be more transparent. If you're stealing people's data, tell them. Just like when you steal people's data for, uh, like, uh, X, Y, and Z reason, you should also provide them with the real data. If you are ending up talking about more important matters like short interest reporting, right? Why is it that that number is not necessary to be reported when everything else is when it comes to long positions?" Candice Finnerson is coming in here. What's up? Oh. Oh, Candice snake poop. Is that what's going on here? Uh, let's see. Uh... Something about conspiracy theories. How far back from squeezing did this set us back, you think? I don't think this, I, I think this is like a blip, if you think about it, because AMC rolled past $12 here, and GME barely uh, moved past its healthy growth from the last few days. Remember, it had double digits on Monday. So in that sense, GME had two positive days. Yesterday was slightly less positive because it was just uh, roughly around that single digit percentage, but it was still green. And now we're only down 6%, right? If you think about like the grand scheme of things, we've had major rips that were, uh, that were evened out today, but overall still staying pretty consistent. Wow, Dogecoin down 25%, Bitcoin back down eight, and Ethereum back down 20. It's so enticing. It's so enticing to jump into the crypto market right now. It's like, if you miss out on this, you're going to be so sorry. Jump in on crypto when it's hot. Ethereum's not showing. A buy Doge. I'm just going to buy my Doge on, on uh, Weeble here. E. I'm looking for that big, fat 4 out of 4 buy signal here. Like you'll you'll miss the very bottom of the pit of the pit, but at least you'll get this like assurance for Ethereum's sake. Now, unfortunately, right now it might be a scalp play for these cryptos, which means you have to kind of stay on the five minute charts for a while, while you uh, take a look at these moving basically in tandem. At this rate, then it's like crypto uh, altcoins versus stablecoins, or always fighting against each other. Now is the time to think about uh, altcoins and, and stablecoin as trending together almost, almost exactly in tandem. Right? Bitcoin had a much, uh, much more muted buy signal here, but it's still the same buy signal from earlier. <laughs> oh, there it is. Meatball's buying me some AMC here. Okay, we're trying it out today, right? If people don't like it, we're not going to do it anymore. But uh, bark for buy. Hold on, can I pull this up, please? There we go. Extended hours, yes. All right, another 10 shares of AMC. Boom, baby. You just, you just cost me $124. <laughs> mean Come on, buddy. Hello, welcome back. Well, hello, hey. welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Bark for buy. If people still think that that's not the right ethos that we're playing out with, then we'll cut that out. But just for today. 
I'm not ten. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, trying to outlaw Bitcoin news. Outlawing it? I thought it was just like verbally abusing it. Hold on, let me go pull up that article again. China crypto. China bans financial payment institutions from cryptocurrency business. Huh? China bans financial payment institutions from cryptocurrency. Okay, let's just look at the Reuters. Good watchdog. Rap says, we like it. Good. It keeps things fresh. It keeps things hot. Oh, Cody just wrote out an intro for Phonium. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Can I have more water, please? Stop it. I love drinking water. <laughs> Pavlov's bell. Okay. Um, Matt Siebert says, Bark for Buy is actually hilarious, and I love it. Okay. Go like it. Gives us a chance to talk about Meatball's dab trick coming up uh, at 1,600 likes. Coming up there. Okay, let's take a look. China bans financial payment and institutions from cryptocurrency business. China has banned financial institutions and payment companies from providing services related to cryptocurrency transactions. So this is not only, thank you. This is not only bad for crypt the crypto market overall, but any uh, institution that currently accepts crypto as well. Because then it kind of like gives them a black flag when it comes to the, uh, the like acceptability of, uh, of how the Chinese market takes in their business. Do, 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 do. Uh, okay, any info on FTDs? We can cover that in just a second, but we are uh, we're looking right now at what China actually spilled a bunch of water on me. Uh, <laughs> China actually wants to do, and it was China's latest attempt to clamp down on what it's a burgeoning digital trading market. Under the ban, such institutions, including banks and online payment channels, must not offer clients with any service involving cryptocurrency, such as registration, trading, clearing, settlement. Three industry bodies said in a joint statement there's Tuesday. It does kind of make sense. Actually, I'm surprised that people haven't been calling this uh, as like the impending market crash uh, like catalyst because China's whole thing is about centralization of information and power so decentralization is basically the opposite of that which kind of makes you feel like you know every time people knock Tesla or Neo or CCIV uh, you're also knocking the future of humanity's like ability to rely on non gas engines which is exactly what the gas industry wants us to, the petroleum industry wants us to do However, at the same time, if whenever you're knocking cryptos as like a speculative, like valueless technology, you're also just playing into hands of governments who want to centralize uh, currencies for their own benefit. So that's the that's the fine balance of being able to play for both sides. Do, 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 do. Oh man, my throat. I have the same glass, only mine is full of box wine. Hashtag Red Wednesday. BTS sandwich coming in. Uh, Gummy Bear Overlord TTV, the bot cheat code, where is the program they bought? Now go ahead and go into trading view, and you should be able to see on your right side, hold on, 
the idea streams. I'm actually a grandpa when it comes to these things. Oh, which one is it? POM, order panel, private chats, public chats, my ID. Well, you should have an alert. Something on this side that is then going to be able to help have you access cheat code algo here. And if you still have trouble and you don't get it, then send me an email directly and I'll connect you with the founders. So you're saying there's a chance. La, La Ferrari 89. Uh, I listen to you in a work van sometimes. One day it was silent and meatball suddenly barked and I jumped out of my skin. And now we're paying it forward. <laughs> This is for all the people that got scared by meatballs barks. Uh, hashtag bark and buy. Mr. Corgo says, how do you highlight someone's name? Well, there's two ways. One, you apply with the mods and become a moderator, but that's probably a harder way. The other way is to press that join button in the description, right next to the subscribe button, uh, which all of you have pressed. Uh, and then head on down to uh, one of the options to get a cool green flare on your name. I promise, it's cool. So recently, cryptocurrency prices have skyrocketed and plummeted, and speculative trading of cryptocurrency has rebounded, seriously infringing on the safety of people's property and disrupting the normal economic and financial order. So this is China just giving like another a little piece of mumbo jumbo for uh, like why they think cryptocurrency. They could just basically say, "We don't care about you. We don't care about the people. We're just here to give you uh, to give us more control over the financial markets here." Oh, Kyle G says, there's a two-part process for registering. Apart from waiting 24 hours, you need to register your Discord and TradingView account. Also check your spam email. Hey, thank you. People, oh, apes helping apes here. Get onboarded. Okay, let's take another look at that uh, non-dark pool OTC data from AMC side. All right, so that's 1.2 $1 billion shares from March alone. Total trade here gives you a sense of average size of the trade. So that's about 6 million divided by 1.2. That actually is easy math if I can do it properly in my head. It's 1,200 uh, divided by 6, which is 200. So uh, roughly 200 shares per trade. This is why I don't like to do math anymore. <laughs> yeah, on stream live. Uh, Ichiba Senpai Trades has never gotten a, uh, a invite to the mod discord? Mods, please help him out. Holy moly, I had no idea. Okay. Instead of AMC, let's take a look at GME. GameStop. Roughly six times fewer, five times fewer. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, Citadel has fallen to second place in March. Wait, should we should we be actually attacking Virtue America's LLC instead? This is new. Has no one checked the uh, OTC data for a long time? Is Virtue actually the one that we should be focusing our attention on instead? Hold on, I'm going to go on Superstock and check it out. Uh, hey, Andrew, in the interest of furthering my researching skills, I've heard that there's 3.2 million of us involved in the movement. How do I find stats like this? I believe that stat was from the Quartz article I covered on the show uh, yesterday. So go ahead and you can find that article uh, by going down into the video called... It's the one with Adam Aaron in it, and it says... It's the one with the Adam Aaron in the thumbnail. So go ahead and tell me and let me know if you can't find that video. It's right in the last few videos that I've uploaded. Oh ho. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to search virtue. There too. I search? How do I search? There, there's the search. Virtue. Fourteen days ago, juicy breaking DD congressional draft bill said that they would penalize uh, Citadel and Virtue. New chairman, new SEC chairman sets sights on Citadel and Virtue. So it's the same article, I basically. Maybe we're looking at the wrong place. New SEC chairman. So this is from last week. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Yes, Jitco just goes on top of Trading View. On. Adam Aaron made the statement. Yes, thank you. That's why it was on the court's channel, uh, the court's um, article here. Hey, what's up, Big Mo Money? Says DJ Naz T N eight. Uh, Matthew says, been super busy golfing, waiting for Mother of All Short Squeezes last week, but this stream has changed a lot. I need a beer and a dab, you know, apparently we're just chilling now. We're still, we're still b bringing up the energy, but I'm trying to be myself, and I'm not a, I'm not a huge like, energy person. I like getting there. I do like getting there. It does take a, a, a shot of, you know, it's been 1,300. Let's say at 1,400 likes, I'm going to take a shot of Glenn, right? We're, we're basically like 50 away, so... It's about time. Okay, virtue, Citadel and Virtue. Mr. Gensler said such incentives called payment for order flow represent a conflict of interest for online brokers. Oh, wait, this is May 20th. May 20th. That's tomorrow. <laughs> How did this article come out already? No, 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 this article is old. That's weird, though, that it's pen marked for one day in the future. Uh, anywho, you're in my ear. I'm probably going to head out so I can play some Ark Survival on Xbox with the wife. Aw, that's nice. So awesome being married. Aw, that's wholesome. Thank you. That's very wholesome. Commenters do bring out the energy. That's true. Okay, let me actually make this video because it's actually getting kind of interesting. Inra allows you to get dark pool data for free. I agree. Okay. All right, let's do this. In my face first. So there it is. You know, Professor Meatball, I was going ahead giving an apology to the friends and frem. <laughs> That's what it takes sometimes. You know, Professor Meatball, I was actually giving an apology and an update on my behavior uh, and the live stream that I hope you guys all saw. Go ahead and check that out. Uh, that's the one that just happened during After Hours when I noticed that there is something that I want to bring to your attention. Did you guys know that you can look at dark pool data available free to the investing public? Uh, this is something that you guys can take a look at right away, and I've already started the process for you. In fact, all you need to do is go over to this little tab here, OTC non-ATS issued data, and if you guys stick to the end of the video and help this video get up to 1,700 likes, well, that is going to be a piece of the puzzle. Go ahead and comment out which like you are and uh, tell us a little bit more so that we can defeat that algorithm and more apes can find out about this message because if you switch this to monthly and then bring this to 
to AMC. It's kind of like uh, pumping a code into a secret encoder. But here is the 1.2 billion trades uh, from the non-dark pool uh, OTC over-the-counter or off-exchange data from March. And in March, we had half a billion in Citadel and then close to the same in Virtue. And so we don't talk very much about Virtue. We, say, we usually use Kenneth Griffin as a punching bag because he is really at the helm of Citadel and he's kid genius anyway, right? But have you noticed that GME as virtue on the very top for March, right? Actually by a significant margin, an 80, 000, 80 million versus about 100 million trades for virtue. So in that sense, can we actually take a look at this article from the Wall Street Journal, new SEC chairman setting its sights on Citadel securities and virtue in order to be able to tell us when are regulations going to kick the uh, squeeze engine into overdrive? Thank you guys for staying uh, for the important little trick people might perform at the end of this video. So testifying before Congress last week, right, we also streamed that live. Securities and Exchange Commission ch uh, Chairman Gary Gensler criticized the system that funnels orders to Citadel Securities and Virtue, which pay for the opportunity to trade with retail stocks and options orders. We know that the Gensler has something major planned for these, uh, these large institutions that have so much weight to throw around. So there you go. Uh, Mr. Gensler said such incentives call payment for order flow represent a conflict of interest for online brokerages, which collectively make billions of dollars a year from the practice. He voiced concern that the trading firms handling most individual investors' orders control too much of the business. In an interview with CNBC on Friday, Mr. Gensler went further, comparing the retail wholesalers unfavorably with public exchanges whose prices are considered lit. And yeah. He did say lit. He also said very similar, uh, similar things to I like the stock. Uh, so from that perspective, Gary Gensler knows about the zeitgeist of the meme world. And he is one of us, at least on the outward appearance, sending us secret messages and the like. So a lot of these are really just going to the wholesalers. They are not as lit. They're not as competitive, he said. So it's not as clear we are actually getting best execution on an unlit interna internalized wholesaler as contrasted to the lit markets. As a reminder, the data that we're looking at is not from the dark pool. It is non-ATS, and that's something you can think about as non-dark pool. So this is lit data, but we are still taking a free crack at the FINRA website giving us transparency since 2014. Uh, and the FINRA uh, CEO chair also was at the congressional hearing and he had a, co a couple of important things to say. So I believe that these two bulls are in the corner of the apes here. It's unclear whether SEC would go as far as banning payment for order flow. Doing so would make it harder for brokerages to offer zero commission trading. Uh, <coughs> we will get your two free stocks with the link in the description down below. And the agency has revealed the practice several times in the past without prohibiting it. Brokers and traders say routine orders to wholesalers benefits investors. Well, people close to Mr. Gensler said his regulatory instincts come from his long experience in markets, including years at Goldman Sachs Group, Inc. Mr. Gensler puts more trust in regulated trading venues that post prices publicly and is generally skeptical of less transparent systems that gives intermediaries more power to set prices. We know Gensler's track record, especially in uh, breaking down the... Uh, the financial crisis in 2008 and giving us a hope that he is the right person for the job, right? Joe Biden put him there, uh, and that should speak a little bit about his uh, his political connections, right? He has a showman uh, attitude. He knows exactly how to swing for the bleachers. And in fact, in, during that congressional hearing, when Congressman Tlaib, uh, Rashida uh, Tlaib was giving him hardball questions about some of these unprepared remarks, he was actually starting to get deer in the headlights uh, reactions to it. So he might not be showing us everything, but at the very least, with according to this Wall Street Journal article, he's giving it his sights set on Citadel and Virtue. And at the very least, from our uh, the data that FINRA provides, those are the two uh, people that we haven't been able to, especially for Virtue, provide transparent DD on quite yet. Okay. So he is, is certainly looking at it more critically than the SEC has in recent years, says Larry Harris, University of Southern California professor and former SEC chief economist. Gary has correctly identified a serious conflict of interest between the interests of the broker and of its clients. 
uh, in the first three months of 2021, Citadel Securities paid more than $475 million to brokers for handling their customer stock and option orders, making it the biggest source of payment for order flow, according to Bloomberg Intelligence. Among the largest recipients of such payments were TD Ameritrade, owned by Charles Schwab, and Robinhood Markets. So what does Robinhood do? Let me quickly draw this out for you to explain payment for order flow. For those of you that have stayed this far into the video and want to know like visually, what is that? When you make an order, let's say you want to buy 100 shares of AMC at this price, which is a 12.69 right now, what's, what's trading for after hours, you can then tell your broker, let's call them, uh, you know, a bad broker name, a, a fictional name, let's call them Robinhood. And now you go to Robinhood and you say, hey, I want to be able to buy 100 shares of AMC at this price. Robinhood then for free, takes your uh, takes your order to a uh, a clearinghouse or a market maker, and then says, "Hey, I'm the broker. I'm instituting this. But first, before you uh, execute this order, can I please send this information and the price at which this uh, order should be executed at?" to some high frequency trading bots? No? Well, okay, I'm gonna do it anyway, and they get a commission off of it. In fact, their commission uh, should be based on how many shares, uh, sorry, how many uh, trades there are. Shouldn't be based on the spread, which is how bad of a deal you're getting. Uh, it's the margin on which the true price, the best execution, and the not so best execution gets executed, right? So you, sometimes you look at the price on Weeble and you see 1270, what if the true price and the spread is actually pretty Pretty large. Well, the larger it is, the more Robinhood makes on top of its commission. And by selling your data, it not only puts your own trade at risk, it also gives the high frequency trading algorithms a chance to collect a simulation uh, worth an entire universe worth of data right there and then get against you. Basically, if you had your house on sale for $100,000 on your street, uh, fully for everyone else to see, all the real estate sharks are going to come in and they're going to snipe on that price because you just told everyone the price that you're willing to settle at. That is payment for order flow and that's how they've been able to keep these trading apps free. So uh, will there be reform in the future and what will Citadel and Virtue have to answer for? That is up for Gary Gensler to decide, but you know that if you guys have those bells turned on, I know you guys have subscribed, but uh, those of you who don't have your bells on, you might just miss the next video talking about the dark pool activity. So thank you guys for chilling with us and take a look at this Patreon, right? We are uh, excited for those of you that have pressed that join button and are now showing up on the Moon Platoon Guerrillionaire and Be Bubble Space Legends here. If you guys haven't seen your names quite yet, it's because I will finally stop procrastinating and put your names up there. Thank you guys so much. Professor Meeple, thanks you as well, and we'll see you in the money. And that is the end of today's live stream. I want to be able to make sure that I go through some of your questions here. I think I've answered almost everything. Chris Daly still in here. Resort Dog still in here. Kriggs, Galder. Uh, they just won a 4B OSRS stake. Am I proud? I am so proud of you, Kriggs. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Sorry, I couldn't see it until now. That's 1,400 likes. That's another poll of that Glenny. Oh man. Cheers. Oh, that's what I like. Okay, so let's take a look here. Irrelevant, yes, Andrew, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, me going dab, I said 1,600 likes. I guess we have to keep that. Uh, I am a man of my word, right? I even gave you guys a little extra time last live stream to get us up to 1,700 likes. But this time, I have to keep my word. We didn't get to 1,600 likes, but we will next time, right? We'll see you guys in the next After Hours live stream. Peace, mo' money, says irrelevant. Derek Gapuz, still waiting for your cheat code instructions. Go ahead. Remember, check your spam folder. Uh, email me directly, andrewmobusiness at gmail.com, if tonight you still can't figure it out because it's two parts you need to get trading view and then you need to integrate it into your trading view uh, setup uh let's see bts sandwich says starting september 28th you will no longer be able to sell or buy 
Inc. No information. OTC securities through E-Trade. Ooh, coming up. Interesting. Coming up. Brand new infos. Uh, smash the like. Likey, likey is irrelevant. Okay, heck yeah. When am I going to Chicago? Let's get a drink on some rooftop bars. Cannot wait. Each of a, uh, I'm holding you to that. Cannot wait. But first round's on me. All right, ladies and gents, I'm out. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the money. Peace. Mm. Thought I could chug it, couldn't.